Is it worth converting a motocross bike into an enduro bike, a GNCC racer, or a woods bike? In some cases, yes. A motocross bike is very light, cheap, and has fewer things to break. And the extra power and firmer suspension might suit the experienced aggressive rider into racing, but that lightweight and racing pedigree have their disadvantages too. They aren't plated, which restricts where you can ride them legally. In many cases, you'll have a non-O-ring chain, close ratio gearbox, small fuel and oil capacity, no electric star, and that 19-inch rear wheel is more likely to get punctures and restrict your choice of rear tyres. Plus, that race tuning and firmer suspension can be a real problem for less experienced riders. So it all comes down to your budget, where you want to ride, and how you want to ride. Some riders find that by the time they do their enduro conversion, they have wiped out any savings made buying a cheap motocross bike, and still have that close ratio gearbox. Then again, some guys just love tinkering and modifying. So here are the usual mods. Today I get to ride the YZ250 belonging to a well-known local Gumby, Rob Farrington, who is Queensland's golden tyre distributor and owner of Queensland off-road tyres. Rob lists the mods he's done, then I'll get to ride the beast and see what I think of it. The only engine changes we've made is the head has been rechambered by Dave at Two Stroke Performance and an 11 ounce flywheel weight to improve the stall resistance and generally just tame it down a little bit. I told Dave at Two Stroke Performance what I was going to be doing with the bike and he cut the head to suit. The flywheel weight is almost a necessity for riding in the bush I feel and just really improves the traction. We replaced the stock exhaust system with a full build system just to spread the power out a little bit and uh, it definitely wakes the bike up. Suspension front and rear by Full Force Racing Components. James at Full Force revalved the front suspension and made a custom rear shaft for the shock. Absolutely transformed the bike. Got Golden Tire GT216s fitted front and rear. I've been involved with the distribution of Golden Tire for nearly three years now up here in Queensland and have never failed to be impressed by the quality of the product. We run an 18 inch wheel on the rear, not for the performance benefits, but just for the range of tire choices it opens up. Golden Tire have about six different 18 inch tires to choose from. We've changed the gearing to suit the style of riding we do, 13 at the front, 50 on the rear. The low gearing does hurt on the transport sections. It runs out of legs pretty quick, but you always can find a good gear in the more technical stuff. Protection on the bike is limited to a bash plate from Works Racing Parts and dark busters when we need them. My first impressions? Very, very nice. Rob's mods have given the little 250 plenty of grunt and a very meaty mid-range. I'd be tempted to put an even heavier flywheel in just to suit my style of riding, but loved the engine overall. The YZ250 is known for great suspension already, but it's like a magic carpet ride with whatever tweaks FFRC made. Very, very plush. The YZ250 has a dry weight of only 96 kilograms or 212 pounds, so it feels ridiculously light and nimble. The tight single track or extreme enduro terrain, you can see why lightweight is the holy grail. Rob doesn't mind constantly changing gear and likes how the close ratio gearbox ensures the perfect gear. But I really missed the wider ratios of a proper enduro bike. Plus, the Yamaha still only has a five speed box, which limits it even more. Some riders go the option of higher gearing, then fitting an auto clutch for the slow stuff. An expensive compromise solution at best. So 
is it worth converting a motocross bike to an enduro bike? Sadly, in most of Australia there are few places you can legally ride an unplated bike. But other countries like the US have plenty of GNCC events and places to ride those unplated bikes. If you are on an extreme budget and can live with the compromises, it makes a lot of sense. Also, for the competent, aggressive rider, it could be a nearly ideal solution. And of course, some guys love a project bike and don't mind throwing money at a conversion like this. But I suspect for many, it simply makes more sense to just buy a proper enduro bike, strip it back to save weight, and say, put a lithium battery in it. But each to their own, of course. Got any further tips, mods, or suggestions? Let me know, and I can add them in here.